this video, I show you how to shoot a silhouette photo with a simple one light setup. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a silhouette using just one single light. Now, lights come with a whole bunch of different light modifiers, and we're going to try four different types of modifier to see what works best with a silhouette. We're going to try bare bulb, so no modifier at all. We're going to use a reflector, a grid, and a conical snoot. Now, I can't do this on my own, of course, and today I'm going to be working with Gemma. Do you want to say hello, Gemma? All we need to do is set the light up, get some balloons, and we'll take some shots. So to begin with, I'm going to start with no modifier on the flash whatsoever. I'm using the Streaklight 360 for this shoot, and it has a feature called bare bulb, where the, the whole of the light is exposed and light goes pretty much everywhere. Now this is going to give a silhouette because it's behind our subject. Light is going onto the background, the background's going to be lit, but not so much light is falling onto Gemma, so Gemma's going to be darker and silhouette. That's the idea. Let's take a shot and see how it looks. So with that shot, it's okay. Definitely a silhouette. The balloons are back illuminated. That's why they're there. They're semi-translucent. But the shadow in the foreground is not what I'm after at all. The light is coming forwards and up and to the sides. So to get some control to this shot, I'm going to add in a reflector. And this would be a little bit like using the wide angle end of your zoom if you were using a speed light flash. Now I'm just going to pop this on the front of the streak light. And straight away, you can imagine how this is going to work. The light's going to come forwards, but because this is solid, none of the light's going to go up or to the sides, and we're not going to get the spill back on Gemma that we had before. Let's take a picture and see how it looks. Yeah, and that's done exactly what I predicted. We've got a nice drop off at the edges, that shadow at the front has been eliminated, and yet the balloons are still rear illuminated. That looks pretty good. But would it be better with one of these? This is a honeycomb grid. It's a small series of honeycomb shaped holes that push light in one direction. In theory, this should give us a much tighter circle of light and a very different look to the background on our silhouette. It slots into the reflector really simply. There we go. Just take the picture. So as you can see, that is a much tighter circle of light. Not sure it's quite what I'm after. So this time I'm going to add in the conical snoot. Now, in theory, this should be a very small circle of light. I think this will be way too small, but hey, you've got nothing to lose by trying. So let's just pop that in and take the shot. Okay, Gemma, here we go. And there we go, we get a very small circle of light and it's not really that good for this particular type of silhouette. Remember the flash distance, the background distance is remaining the same in every single shot. So it's simply the modifiers that are changing the look of the picture. And you might think the conical snoot would be useless, don't use it. But there's one way we can use it where we can still get a good shot. So what I'm going to do is, rather than having the light behind Gemma, and that's a perfect place for it in this shot, although we will need to do some cloning to remove some of the legs in Photoshop, I'm going to take the light and put it over to the side. Not only that, but I'm going to raise it up a bit higher as well. So let's put the light up really high, like that. We'll angle it down a little bit. And we're just going to skim the light down the side of the background. So rather than being a circle of light, we should get a shaft of light. That's the idea. Let's try it out. Here we go. So it can be used to get a silhouette, but it's not quite the shot I'm after in this case. I think of the four that we tried, I like the second one with the standard reflector. So I'm going to put that back onto the light, put the light back behind Gemma, and then we're going to do a shoot. Okay, Gemma, are you ready? Let's do it. Little higher than that. Then you go a little bit further around. So you're not 
na sa dito. Dito ako oh, siya. So, That's the way I feel. Leaning, you're leaning back into it, so they're almost like they're blowing you. So, again, keep this moving. Okay, that's terrific. Well, there we go. We've got a load of silhouette shots there, plenty to choose from. So what I'm gonna do now is to get my favorite picture into Photoshop, and we'll do a little bit of post-processing there as well. And we're gonna do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. As always, I took all of my pictures in camera raw format. And as always, that means I need to do a little bit of work in Photoshop just to get the best out of the file. Let's have a little look. Now, this is the picture as it came off of the camera with a little bit of cropping done. And although it looks okay, it's, it's not quite how I remember the picture on the LCD on the camera. On the LCD, it was a lovely deep black silhouette, but here I can actually see detail in Gemma's arm and in Gemma's face. And in this case, I want them to be nice and solid and black. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the blacks slider and take the slider down into the minus area and we'll keep going down. I reckon about there, about minus 70 should be pretty much perfect for this shot. So that's given a, a nice deep solid silhouette, but it's affected the whole picture. We now have much darker edges around here and the balloons, well, they're not as bright as they were a minute ago. So we need to bring that back. Now I don't mind the dark edges, but those balloons, well, I can fix them fairly simply by changing tools. And I'm gonna change this one here, the adjustment brush. Now the adjustment brush allows me to make small changes to small parts of the picture. So let's click it. I get a brand new panel, the adjustment brush panel. And I can choose to increase the exposure, for example, by dragging the exposure slider about a stop and a half. Yeah, that should be fine. And then I just click on the balloons it's like putting extra light into the balloons because that's literally what we're doing. And I can change it even after I've painted. I can move the slider around to get it exactly how I want it. Maybe you know, a little brighter and a little bit more saturation in there to really make those reds come out. And maybe a little bit of clarity in there too, just to, to give it an edge. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'll click the OK button. We'll leave raw behind and I'll go into Photoshop. Now, the reason I need to come back into Photoshop is there is one more thing that I need to do and Photoshop is the best place to do it. And it was a problem that I knew I was gonna have even whilst I was taking the pictures. It's the legs of the light stand. I needed the light behind Gemma. I wanted a nice even illumination behind her. And that meant having some form of lighting stand in the shot. Removing it, fortunately, isn't too tricky. So having a look down here, here, we can see the, the light stand quite clearly. And my tool of choice for this sort of work is this guy here, the Spot Healing Brush. So I love the Spot Healing Brush because all you need to do is just paint over the thing you want to remove, like that, and uh, when you let go and you cross your fingers, it disappears. Now, it might need a, a couple of clicks just to get it absolutely right, so don't be surprised if you need to just sort of click in a few times. But you can use it to remove any little minor blemishes as well. But big things like this, yep, paint over them, and there you go. Larger parts like this, now this is a bit more tricky because there's a little bit less for this tool to work with and we have to kind of hope a little bit that it'll work. And don't be surprised if you need to go over this two or three times. Ah, look at that, there we go. 